Good evening. I'm glad everyone came out today. I know it's a little cool, a little cold, and hopefully uh, we won't get as much snow um, as we got last week. Uh, nonetheless, uh, I'm glad that you're here. And so at this time, I would like to call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Newport News School Board for January 16th, 2018. On behalf of the mem members of the school board and the acting superintendent, welcome Brian. With us, Mr. Nichols, uh, I welcome each of you present and watching. A quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. Tonight, uh, we will hear citizens' comments regarding uh, the superintendent search, uh, more specifically, the qualifications for our next superintendent. This will take place uh, at our public hearing, which will begin at 7 p.m. Uh, we will continue on with the agenda until that time. Um, and if you do would like to uh, have some comments for the board, please go out right outside the door and uh, sign up for the speaker request card. They're located right there on that desk, and they'll bring them forward. Uh, that said, we're going to do our usual. Uh, we'll begin tonight's meeting with the invocation and pledge to the flag. Here to do the honors are two students from Jenkins Elementary School, Caleb Jarman and Ashante Turner. Achievable dream. I'm sorry. Achievable dream. Oh, I'm sorry. That's what I get for reading. Yeah, from achievable dream. Okay, first we'll have Caleb come up. He'll come forward and deliver the invocation, and then we'll follow behind um, Ashante. will come up thereafter. So, uh, Caleb, please come on up and tell us a little bit about yourself now before we begin. Um, good evening. Good evening. My name is Caleb Jarman. I am a freshman at Achievable Dream Middle and High School. I currently coach for the middle school volleyball team. I also enjoy playing and listening to music. My future goals are to attend college and major in program design and animation. Please prepare your hearts for the invocation. What is education? That is a question we all ask ourselves. Education is not just about school, classes, and grades. It's about knowledge that within time doesn't fade. The true essence of studying is lies in being passionate. It's about a zealous urge to be in charge of one's own fate. Thank you, Newport News Public Schools, for preparing students to be college career and citizen ready for our future. It is truly an honor to stand in front of you all today. I would like to personally thank you, administrators, school board members, for all that you have done and all that you will do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Ashanti Turner. I am a junior at an Achievable Dream Middle and High School. I am currently a member of the Heritage High school football team, and I played several positions, including punter, cornerback, and safety. My future goals are to attend college where I plan to major in biology and improve the lives of others. To honor our country, will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Our Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may not be seated. Uh, Kylie and Ashante, um, great job. Both of you have uh, great futures. We're going to have a designer. We're going to have a biology, probably a doctor, something like that. Uh, anyway, those are the types of things and what, what we expect from our kids. and. I know you two are fine examples of what can be. And thanks again uh, while you're here. I know you have your family members are here, along, uh, also along with your school family. Could you please uh, stand up and be recognized? Uh, the board appreciates uh, the encouragement you have given these young men. And uh, we thank you for bringing them to the meeting this evening. Okay. 
Uh, we will continue down our agenda. Okay. Next we have um, item 1.04, board recognitions. And we do. We have some board recognitions tonight. We're going to honor some amazing staff members who have received a national honor and also uh, several of schools who are uh, getting a Virginia State Award for being uh, very conservative uh, and economically friendly. Um, so that's the awards that we're going to have. So we're going to come around front, Mr. Hunter and uh, Ms. Price, if you'll help us. I have the honor of presenting this month's recognitions. For an educator, receiving national certification um, is a symbol of excellence in teaching and professional growth. Newport News Public Schools is pleased to announce that two educators recently met the standard for national certification established by the National Board for Professional Teaching Standards. These educators will not only strengthen their profession, but increase academic achievement and rigor in the classroom. Please join me in congratulating our newest National Board Certified Teachers. We'll begin with Matthew Allen. Mr. Allen? <laughs> Mr. Allen is a fifth grade teacher at Hilton Elementary School. He earned certification as a middle school or a middle childhood generalist. He's been an educator for seven years and he's been part of the Newport News Public Schools family for seven years. Our next honoree is Holly Sawyer. Ms. Sawyer? Ms. Sawyer is an English as a Second Language Educator at Watkins Early Childhood Center. She is certified as an English as a New Language Early and Middle Childhood English Language Development Specialist. She has nine years of experience as an educator, all within Newport News Public Schools as well. National Board Certification is the highest credential in the teaching profession. The certification process usually takes between one and three years to finish. These educators successfully completed the assessment process by preparing a portfolio of good teaching practices, student work, and multimedia examples. A reflective written component looks at teaching goals, methods, and results. Candidates also have to pass an extensive series of rigorous written exercises. Mr. Allen, Ms. Sawyer, we're very proud to have you in Newport News Public Schools. It takes a lot of patience and understanding to go through that process. So at this time, we'd like to recognize uh, their support system that has stood behind them. Um, through this process, I'd like for them to stand up. Your family members um, and your school colleagues, would you please stand that have joined both of them? Tonight. Thank you so much. Each year, the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries coordinates the Virginia Naturally School Recognition Program. The program recognizes schools for their efforts in increasing the environmental awareness and stewardship of its students. This year, seven Newport News Public Schools earned this designation, the highest number ever. Present tonight are representatives from each school community who will accept this recognition on behalf of their school's students, staff, and volunteers. Our first school community is a four-time honoree, Deer Park Elementary School. Joining us this evening are Principal Mary Jo Anastasia and fifth grade teacher Lori Morgan. Among the many activities at our Environmental Science Magnet School, Deer Park Elementary students planted Spartina grass in their grow labs 
and later brought the plants to the banks of the Elizabeth River in Chesapeake. The grass will help prevent erosion along, along the river's edge, filter water from the runoff, and provide a habitat and food for a variety of animals. Our next Virginia Naturally honoree is a two-time honoree, Marshall Early Learning Center. <laughs> and joining us are Principal Vanessa Keller and Instructional Assistant and Project Lead Barbara Michi. Please come forward. And also Ms. Michi's husband, who's been a great volunteer. Congratulations. <laughs> Last school year, Marshall students, staff, and volunteers planted a community garden. This year, they expanded their outdoor learning space and added more raised beds and a pumpkin patch. The school is also partnered with the local Sierra Club members to share updates on air quality, and they've received a grant for an indoor aquaponics system. So we're looking forward to that as well. Five schools are in the Virginia Naturally designation for the first time this year. I'll begin with Denby Early Childhood Center, represented by Principal Amelia Hunt. And teacher and project coordinator, Sherry Miller. Denby Early Childhood Center established a classroom-based recycling program, created a partnership with Norfolk Botanical Gardens, installed a rain barrel, and established a garden and outdoor classroom. Congratulations. Discovery STEM Academy is also a first time honoree. Please welcome Assistant Principal Dina Boyd and Garden Club Chairman Michelle Braxton. At Discovery STEM Academy, third grade students led a Trex bag recycling program to stop plastic from entering local waterways. Plans are now underway to expand this program to the entire school. The school will also have a dashboard that students can view to monitor water and electricity usage and how it affects the school's carbon footprint. Nelson Elementary School is our next honoree. Present tonight, Thank you. Present tonight um, are our fourth grade teacher uh, and garden committee chair, Stephanie Johnson, and fifth grade student and earth angel, Jordan King. <laughs> master gardeners and master naturalists train the staff at Nelson to raise monarch butterflies in their classrooms. Classes took on various projects to enhance and manage the upkeep of the school garden as well. Sedgefield Elementary School is also a Virginia Naturally School. Please welcome Principal Raquel Cox and 21st Century Leader Cassandra Murphy. <laughs> Sedgefield Elementary students and staff created a design challenge and map the Chesapeake Bay watershed, which includes New Market Creek. Students learned about drainage issues due to rainfall and how to best manage stormwater. The school has received two grants to better improve stormwater management on the grounds and also to support an educational program at the school as well. And our final honoree is Booker T. Washington Middle School. Accepting recognition on behalf of her school community is lead science teacher Laura Nelson Rogers. As part of the Marine Science Magnet Program at Booker T. Washington, students participated in a Virginia Marine Science Program by growing wild celery to help the Chesapeake Bay shoreline restoration, as well as raising oysters to be released to a sanctuary reef in the York River. So again, congratulations to all of our schools that have earned the Virginia Naturally designation. <laughs> and as they make their way back to their seats, I'd like to note that the seven schools in Newport News are among 70 across the state to earn the recognition this school year. Again, I would like to take a moment to thank all of them, all of their 
um, friends and family and colleagues that have joined us tonight. Would you please stand? Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Again, thank you. Congratulations to all of our honorees tonight. At, at this point, we'll take a five minute break so that our honorees and their guests may leave if they choose to do so. Of course, you are welcome to stay if you'd like. <laughs> During this time, our viewing audience will have an opportunity to view this month's school board spotlight. So we'll stand in recess for about five minutes. Thank you. Students at Woodside High School got in the spirit of the season by giving their neighbors at Greenwood Elementary the gift of reading. For over two weeks, Woodside's SCM, German National Honor Society, and students in the freshman class promoted and organized a school-wide book drive. These efforts resulted in over 1,400 brand new books that were sorted and boxed for delivery to Greenwood. With Santa hats on and the Woodside Wolverine leading the pack, high school students made the short trip to Greenwood to pass out books and candy canes to every classroom. Teachers were welcomed to select books for their classroom libraries, while students selected books for themselves. High school students enjoyed taking turns reading aloud in each classroom. Collections of books were gift wrapped and raffle drawings were held each day so Greenwood teachers could gain more great books to encourage their students' love of reading. What the students at Woodside pulled off was nothing short of a Christmas miracle. Donating books, giving their time, and building relationships with the students and staff at Greenwood exemplified the generosity of the holiday season. For young students at Marshall Early Learning Center, attending college may seem like a dream, but with student mentors from Heritage High School encouraging these young scholars to work hard now, dreams can become reality in no time. For the second year, Heritage's Athletes in Action focused on mentoring pre-kindergarten and kindergarten mini kids at Marshall. The mentors include student athletes in basketball, cheerleading, football, and volleyball along with members of the STEM Robotics team. Recently, 54 mini canes from Marshall and 10 Heritage mentors visited Bryant and Stratton College in Hampton for an informative tour to learn what it takes to make big dreams come true. After receiving a warm greeting from the school's Bobcat mascot, the Heritage students guided their mentees through the state-of-the-art campus. In the medical assisting lab, students were able to use a stethoscope to hear each other's heartbeats. For the young Marshall students, their first visit to a college was an eye-opening experience to a world of great possibilities. And with their mentees by their side, the high school students were able to share their insights as they prepare for college life. By touring Bryan and Stratton College together, Heritage's mentors inspired the mini canes to work hard in school now, so they can one day attend college and fulfill their dreams through hard work, dedication, and academic success. Many of our educators are so talented that the title of teacher is just one of the many hats they wear day to day. This is especially true of Dr. Marjorie Lisao Wallace, a seventh grade biology teacher at Huntington Middle School by day. <laughs> who also moonlights as an artist, uh, musician, bay saver, and science lab designer, just to name a few. In the fall, the Downing Gross Cultural Arts Center presented an interactive gallery highlighting the educational themes yes. of Dr. Lee Sal Wallace. Titled, My Love of Beetles and Bugs, the free exhibit examined the importance of insects in our ecosystem through colorful art, interactive floor puzzles, thought-provoking games, Microscopic hey, how are you? Good to see you. I doing? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I'm doing well. Thank you. The exhibit, which intentionally covered right. a range of SOL-based You going to talk to the board tonight? 
Over 150 young students from Marshall Early Learning Center were excited to participate in the number of staff and other activities at Downtown. In the community gallery, the ladybug teacher herself gave the students a personal tour of her artwork, allowing them to explore the beauty and fun in science and the world of bugs. These hey, students also you? enjoyed exploring the creative arts by learning about acting on stage and decorating their own musical instruments. By presenting science through acrylics, watercolors, oils, and mixed media, the wonders of beetles and bugs came alive in a wonderfully creative way, allowing metamorphosis to occur, transforming a blank exhibit hall into a kid-friendly museum where young minds can flourish. Welcome back, and uh, we hope that you enjoyed the school board spotlight. Uh, before we get started, I would like to recognize a few folks in the audience. I see we have our vice mayor, Mrs. Tina Vick. Thank you. <laughs> and we also have Mr. John McMillan, used to be on the school board. <laughs> and outside, we used to have our uh, vice mayor, um, Rob Coleman, I know he's out there somewhere, but he's also present with us today. Okay. Oh, uh, yes, I saw Miss Barnett. Is she here? Barnett. Priscilla. Priscilla. Miss Priscilla Barnett. I know she's here. She's paid. Yeah. Oh. School board member. Yes, pay school board member. Absolutely. Is that all? Well, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. That is evening. Uh, Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Batterson. Oh, Mr. Batterson. Former Jim? School board yes, former school board member. Yes. Welcome. <laughs> Any others? Any others? Any others? Okay. There being none, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, during the meeting, uh, we provide time for the public to address the board. These are scheduled at the early part of the agenda and then also toward the end of the meeting. The board considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we will consider your concerns or get back with you at a later matter. So at this time, we do have, before the public meeting, we have three cards that we are going to, from audience other than the school superintendent search, and we will take care of those first. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. As you, as you come, come forward, um, please state your name and you have three minute timeline. It's a green light, and then the yellow light comes on, means that you have 30 seconds. And uh, when the red light comes on in a beat, we hope that you would wrap your comments up. Uh, that being said, first card we have is Miss Kathy Bogan. Is that correct? Kathy Hilton. Hilton. Oh, oh, Kathy Hilton and Heidi Bogan too. Oh, there's four of you. <clears throat> Plus students. Good evening, school board members and Mr. Nichols. We are here tonight from uh, Woodside High School. Ms. Bogan and I are a part of the visual art magnet there. And we are here to share a, a project that we've been working on with our students, Kaya Veneer and Tiana Sykes. And it is a project that um, we at one time had an in-service with a visitor from the Newport News Arts Foundation here to um, tell us about the public art sculptures on display throughout Newport News. And we thought that that would at one time be an interesting field trip and photography opportunity since we both teach a photography class at Woodside to give our students a chance to go on a photo shoot and then do something where they go back and download and edit their pictures and possibly turn it into a finished product. And so we have a product that we would like to share with you tonight, but we want to tell you a little bit more about it first. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much for just <coughs> taking the time um, for letting us kind of share this with you. Um, I have the pleasure of working with lots of really talented students and with other teachers, and so it was really fun to plan for this project. Um, when we set out to do it, um, we wanted to take a closer look and photograph the sculptures. Um, 
And so what we did was we planned it, we went around, we drove, and we um, figured out how we could fit as many sculptures in as we could in the small amount of time during the school day. So we did it, and we um, set on a quest, and we uh, had the students photograph, brought them back. Um, and so, uh, let's see what else. Um, and we ended up doing 12 sites. Um, and so we just really wanted to share this with you. Um, and just as a reminder of all the great things that we're doing. And so you can put it on your desk and, and we're, yeah. So, <laughs> and this is Tiana. There you go. Oh, this is, there we go. Okay, so during our day, we went to 12 different sites and we spent 10 to 15 minutes at each site taking pictures of different angles, trying to get the best lighting and the best angle of each sculpture. And when we took all the pictures, we went back and we edited each photo in Photoshop and took the best pictures to make a calendar out of them. My name is Tiana. I'm very honored to be selected for the 2018 calendar. Um, and we also wanted to share a copy with you guys. And they are desk calendars, which have a collection of photos on the front. And on each month, they have a different image on each of the month. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Boy, great things are happening in Newport News Public Schools. Wow. Uh, get to say that early tonight. Uh, next, we'll have uh, John Smithson. Is that correct? Could you please come on up? Good evening. Tonight, I'd like to address the board with regard to issues occurring on Scott Road as a direct result of actions taken by members of Warwick Little League at the Hydenwood Elementary School Complex. As a former coach and member of the Warwick Little League board, I greatly appreciate the volunteers it takes to run the organization and the opportunity that Little League in general provides to children with regard to sportsmanship, teamwork, and commitment. I moved to Scott Road in 1996. At the time, I was not aware of any prior issues with Ward Little League and the residents of the street. But after moving in, I was told there was a gate in the fence that the city had locked because of parking problems, trash, general disrespect for the residents created by, Ward, by members of, of the league. 20 years later, it seems like we're back where we were. Two to three years ago, a member of the Warwick Little League decided to cut the lock on the gate and start using this as regular access with signage on the gate stating, entry for authorized persons only being ignored. Since this time, the vegetation around the gate has been cut back and removed several times by Warwick Little League to make it more visible. The last time, there were two trees were actually removed. The city replaced the lock, only to have it removed again. Uh, the lock was subsequently replaced several more times. Um, and removed within a few days of installation. The last two years, I've seen a major increase in parking on Scott Road. During a practice, there are typically 10 to 15 cars, and on game day, there will be 25 to 30. This is not just for a couple months in the spring. Work Little League operates at least seven months out of the year, and if all star teams do well, which we hope they will, it's extended to eight months of the year. Scott Road is a two-way residential street with a 25 mile per hour speed limit. With more and more Warwick Little League members, friends, and family parking on both sides of the street, it essentially becomes a one-way street with no marking for traffic flow. Figures one and two show the parking at Scott Road and the empty, the empty parking lot at the school. These pictures were taken within a couple of minutes of each other and make it evident that Warwick Little League does not have a parking problem. Additionally, figures four and five show the blatant disregard for neighbors' access to their homes. The home in figure five is currently for sale I don't think a prospective buyer is going to be thrilled to see how our quiet street becomes a problematic parking lot during the seven months or so of baseball season. Unfortunately, with the increased parking comes increased safety issues. I personally observed a child run through the gate and almost get hit by a car that was moving faster than parking lot speeds. Fortunately, he was grabbed by an adult before he made it to the street. In addition to the safety of the children, the neighbor safety is an issue as well. I have been confronted twice with regard to getting dust on people's vehicles while working in my yard. Also, a participant knocked on my neighbor's door demanding to know why the lot was put back on the gate as if she had done it and vowed to have it removed, which was within a week. 
These types of interactions are unacceptable and of concern to neighbors, and most are older retirees and worry of retaliation. I see I'm about out of time. Um, we're getting after hours use because the gate's been open. I've had to call the Newport News um, non-emergency number a couple of times, Newport News Police non-emergency number um, to try to get things fixed over there. I bolded a few things on the on there that hopefully you can take a look at and, and give us some consideration. Again, we're not trying to do anything to penalize War with Little League. We just want things to go back before um, the way they were before we start another seven months, eight months of, of traffic problems and safety issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Mr. James Lovett, Jr. Good evening, <clears throat> Good evening board members and um, Mr. Nichols and community. Uh, my name is uh, James Lovett, and um, I live uh, 8 Riverlands Drive, Newport News, Virginia. I'm a graduate of Huntington High School, which was the greatest school in Newport News during, after <coughs> I graduated on June 16, 1968. I'm praying, I'm praying and hoping that if my Heavenly Father allows me to stand or sit on this earth in the year 2050, I say 2050. I would like to drive by Huntington High School, which is now Huntington Middle School, and see either the same outside structure at 3401 Orchid Avenue or a new structure which still would still be Huntington Middle School. I say, what shall the Newport News School Board and the Newport News City Council do for the Huntingtonians and the citizens of the Southeast community? The NNSB and the Newport News City Council should make sure that whether it is gutted out or rebuilt, Huntington Middle School should and must always stand at 3401 Orchid Avenue, Newport News, Virginia. Save Huntington Middle School, 3401 Orchid Avenue. It is the only arts and communication magnet school in the Southeast community. If the school is torn down and not rebuilt before the housing redevelopment rebuilds in various locations in the community, it would be a setback for the Southeast community. In addition, it would be a disadvantage for the middle school students to be buzzed so far away from home. In cases of emergency, students becoming sick in school who may live so far away, it could become a problem for some parents trying to pick up their child from school. Justice for all. Justice for all. <clears throat> Not for the North End and the Central Area of Newport News, but justice for the Southeast community. Thank you very much. Wait, we have one more audience card. Is it Jamie Bazemore? Janie, Janie Bazemore? It's Janie Bazemore. How you doing, Miss Bazemore? Again. There she is again. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman and school board members, Mr. Nichols. For some reason, I keep seeing tennis balls and rackets bats and balls that's because when we come before you you say to us have you been before the city council and then when we go to the city council they ask us have you been to the school board <coughs> Whew. anyway they say that that you all need to make a request and we know that they have the funding we feel like tennis balls being volleyed here and there. We need everyone to come together, sit down, have a discussion, and take action. 
We don't care at this point what has happened in the past because there's nothing we can do about it. But from this day forward, let's have an understanding that Huntington Middle School is an integral part and vital part of our school system and it must be taken care of now. Under the court order, which I understand is still in effect, Huntington Middle School should not be closed as the concession in that order provided for middle school students to attend neighborhood schools. And that grades three through five would be bussed out of the Southeast community. Funds for the neglect of repairs that should have been done over the years must be requested by this board and must be funded by the city post haste. We demand that you, the elected officials, act now to do things necessary for the preservation and renovation of Huntington. Can we just have a joint meeting and get this done? I told the city council that they hold the key to Huntington. I'm telling you the same thing. Let's renovate, rebuild. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to move to our public hearing section of uh, this particular meeting. So at this time, the board will hear comments regarding the search for our next superintendent. Uh, the board <coughs> considers this an opportunity to listen to your comments. Please understand that we appreciate and will consider your feedback. And we also ask that you comply with our three minute limit. You have three minutes and then the yellow light comes on means that you have 30 seconds remaining and the red light uh, means that uh, your time is up. So we'll start first uh, Arletris Winters. Good evening board members and Mr. Nichols. I would like to offer input on the selection of our next superintendent. Although I have been a teacher for Newport News Public Schools for the past 26 years and I have been a part of many of the initiatives that have been implemented in our district, I am coming before you as a proud parent of a 2017 Newport News graduate who is, because of opportunities afforded him now, attending college for free. My child attended Dutch Row, Lee Hall, Nelson Elementary Schools, Huntington Middle School, and he graduated last year with honors from Woodside High School. There were, there were so many opportunities offered to my son. He had a chance to grow in school because of the various initiatives that were in place by our district leaders. Leaders who have placed children first and made sure that student had, students had choices, whether they were going to advance their degrees or get an education in a college, or whether they were gonna just work beyond high school. We have so much experience within our district from which to draw. Seeking an external candidate could see our progress be slowed down or even stopped. It is my sincere hope that when you take in consideration a candidate for our new superintendent, that you first search, you first search internally because we have a clear vision that has been set forth that is in the best interest of our students. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Next we have uh, Michael Hamilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Michael Hamilton. I am the Director of Campus Resources for Riverside College of Health Careers. And tonight I'm speaking on behalf of both Riverside Health System and Riverside College. In support of Newport News Public Schools' uh, search for a superintendent, Riverside Health System has supported the current administration with Dr. Kilb Kilgore and Mr. Nichols in the lead and will certainly support the future administration with serving the needs of Newport News Public School students. Riverside Health System uh, was an active participant in the creation of the Governor's Health Science Academy at Warwick High School. And we are an active member of the Career Technical Education Advisory Committee by supporting initiatives introduced through that committee and in ensuring the curriculum and experiential learning opportunities align with industry standards. I was proud to be included along with Jeanette Outland and Mr. Nichols in receiving the Virginia Department of Education's Create, Creating Excellence Award in 2017. Riverside College of Health Careers also offers a health career club to both middle and high school students interested in a medical career. That program was created in 2009 to support the needs of Newport News Public School 
as well as educating students on careers uh, that were on a tra tra trajectory of increased growth. This program has students, students to careers in neurology, oncology, lab sciences, nursing, and allied health professions. Actually, this evening was the first of those meetings. We worked with the Virginia State Police to do uh, drunk driving with high school students. It was actually quite interesting. Riverside College was also a founding partner with the uh, Newport News Public Schools CNU STEM Community Day and has been a, a participating hands-on vendor at that event for the last three years. The college's administrator has also served on the Newport News Education Foundation for the past six years. Again, it's Riverside's pleasure to work hand-in-hand -hand to support students in Newport News and hope to continue the excellent, excellent relationship that has been fostered with doc, Dr. Kilgore and Mr. Nichols. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, next we have up Sherelle Lindsay. Good evening. My name is Sherelle Lindsay and I am an 11th grader at An Achievable Dream High School. I have been a student in Newport News Public Schools for my entire life. In fact, I have attended An Achievable Dream Academy since kindergarten, which makes me a great candidate to talk about what I'm looking for in an individual who can help me reach my goals academically, athletically, and socially. In other words, college, career, and citizen ready. I currently take two AP courses, two honors courses, and I play varsity sports at Heritage High School. It is important to me that me and my classmates continue to be supported in the same manner that we have in the previous years. For instance, the number of classes I am able to take combined with all of the extracurricular opportunities that I have been able to participate in is not an easy schedule to create. Fortunately, we are backed by a number of people who have always made it a priority to meet our unique schedule. I don't want that to change. My friends who attend other schools throughout the district and I are all on similar tracks. We have similar goals. I would hate for any of us to not finish what we started due to changes to occur from different leadership agendas. Thank you for the opportunity to include students in this very important process. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, next card we have a Miss Mrs. Priscilla Barnett. Good evening, board members, um, mm -hmm. Mr. Nichols, audience. Thank you so much for something that is so important as the new superintendent. And because by law that has to be done by June thirtieth, that means that this board will be the person selecting that particular um, superintendent. So one of the things that I want to look for, hope that you will look for in a superintendent is that they understand how important it is to have successful teachers. In order to have a successful system, you have to have successful teachers. And with that, you will have successful te um, students. So also, they have to have a clear vision of the district. And they have, when a clear vision is that they need to know where we're going, how we're going to get there, to include the technolo technology as a part of that, because we are still in some of the 18th century theories of teaching instead of moving to the 21st century. So we need a superintendent that understands that we need to move out of that, that antiquated, outdated types of instructions and allow our teachers to be able to be themselves instead of robots. We need an instructional leader learning, um, teaching high standards. Um, they must have high academic standards for our students. We have 64% of our students are free or reduced lunch. So we have an economically deprived, which is about 18,000 students. So we have to make sure that we are pressing high <clears throat> academics, no matter whether we have parental support, whether we have whatever, we need to make sure that our students are achieving what they need to achieve. Effective in the, communi in the community. One of the things that have fallen short, I think, within the, um, with the board and with Newport News is that we have not given our community what we're doing and what is happening. So we have a lot of people who don't come to our communities because of our schools. I know someone in real estate who say that our people go to York County, Pocosin, because of the positive feedback they get from the schools. So we need that, and we need a superintendent that understands that we don't want to be able to have to have our parents 
pick and choose which school they go to because they don't think all of them are the best ones. So we need all of them to be academically sound, I mean, uh, socially sound and ready to go. And it doesn't matter which school you attend, that everyone gets the best education and the community understands that. So you have a hard job, a difficult job, and if you don't do it well, we will be here to make sure that we see that you carry it out correctly. And in all of that, also next time, instead of having it with the meeting, why don't you come into the community with the people instead of bringing it in here, crowding everybody into a board meeting where we can't and we have a limited amount of time because tomorrow is a school day. So let's remember where, where you come from and what you need to do. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, next we have uh, Alicia Spencer. Good evening, Chairman Hunter, school board members, Mr. Nichols. My name is Alicia Spencer, and although I am a resident of Hampton, I'm a former teacher and principal in the Newport News Division. <clears throat> I'm here tonight to speak on behalf of Newport News Interim Superintendent Brian Nichols. I know you are all very aware of Brian's excellent job performance since becoming Executive Director of Elementary Education and Chief of Staff. But what I'd like to do tonight is take you back to day one, uh -oh. <laughs> when Brian first became a part of the Newport News School Division. In the summer of 1997, I had an opening for a second grade teacher at Marshall. Looking through candidate folders at Human Resources, I came across Brian Nichols' file and was very impressed with his application. It turns out that his grades were excellent, his extracurricular activities were admirable, and I was excited that he was a male candidate who was an early childhood education major. Brian had just graduated from Christopher Newport, and I called him to Marshall for an interview. As you can imagine, I was blown away by his responses to questions that I asked him about teaching young children and about working with students of poverty. At that time, 98% of the Marshall students qualified for free or reduced lunch. I could tell that this young man was going to be a good fit for Marshall and our wonderful students. Actually, Brian had me at good afternoon. I can tell you that Brian was an amazing teacher. He was highly intelligent, still is, <laughs> grasped the curriculum easily, and had a special knack for working with very young children. He instantly became a role model for all students and was a wonderful big brother figure for our Marshall boys. He took a very serious interest in helping our boys believe that someone special was in their corner, supporting them through all of the joys and challenges in their lives. He truly looked after the interest of the Marshall boys and girls and made a difference in their young lives. Colleagues, parents, community members, office staff, custodians, cafeteria workers, and bus drivers all recognized Brian as a personable, highly qualified educator. During his years at Marshall, Brian served as social studies lead and soared in his technology abilities. He served on school committees and was always involved with the many activities and events that were held at school. I remember when he dressed up like a character from a children's book when the author Joy Cowley traveled from New Zealand to visit Marshall for a special assembly. He demonstrated such outstanding teaching ability that a team from central office selected him to be an SOL instructor, instructional specialist, and he transferred with me to Carver when I was assigned there in 2001. At Carver, Brian worked hard and developed a great understanding for school improvement, and we worked together on strategies for moving the school forward. He provided numerous workshops and extensive professional development, planned with individual teachers and grade level teams, and supported teachers in their efforts. <laughs> I won't be much longer. Within a few months, I recognized definite improvement in teacher and student performance. As an SOL specialist, Brian was an excellent instructor, guide, model, and teacher trainer. He also continued his positive relationships with student, staff, parents, and community members. Before long, Brian 
earned his master's degree in administration. Good thing, because within a few years, there was an opening at a carver for an assistant principal. Of course, there was only one individual that I wanted to get that position, Brian Nichols. There were several schools needing assistant principals that year, and so during his interview with an administrative panel, I held my breath that the rest of the panel would agree with me that Brian was the perfect match for Carver. Thank goodness that's just what happened. He was a master assistant principal, I know. He worked very hard and had the same philosophy as I did. Love the students, keep them safe, and do everything in our power to help them learn and succeed in an appropriate environment. Okay, I'll skip down because then he went to central office. Well, oh, by the way, after his first year, Carver became fully accredited. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. So he's Benchester. to be commended, and I truly believe <laughs> that the Newport New School community need look no further than right there in that seat for our next superintendent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry. <laughs> um, next call we have is uh, uh, John McMillan. Good evening. Maybe I can give Alicia some of my time. <laughs> but you've already used it. <laughs> Good evening. I'm John McMillan, and I live up in the North District here in Newport News. I'm also a member of the Newport News Education Foundation and have been for 13 years. I want to congratulate you on the effort that you've, you're undertaking, that of finding our next superintendent. I spent eight years sitting in the seats that you sit in now. Of course, yours looks much nicer than, than ours <laughs> did. Uh, and during that time, I went through the search process twice. I'm sure you have been told, as I was, that this decision that you make is the most important thing that a, that a board can do, and that of selecting a new superintendent. My experience with those two searches reinforces that point. It's my understanding that VSBA is assisting you in this search, and I know that they will do a good job. But I caution you to not let them do all of the work. Mm -hmm. Have them bring a broad range of potential candidates to you, the board, and then each of you sit down and review the packet that comes with each nominee. I'm sure that in doing this, each of you will take ownership in the process and the results. Now, as to what characteristics our next superintendent should have, I will say that I completed, I think I completed, the survey <clears throat> online this afternoon and the details of what I believe are the, the priorities are included in that. I believe, though, that the most important characteristic that a, that a leader must have is to be an effective le listener. The old adage goes something like this, man was given two ears and one mouth and should use them accordingly. And I believe that that, that says listen Excuse me. And then a leader must also be creative in using what they have heard and a motivator in order to bring all of the, the interested parties together to move our school division forward. I want to thank, again, thank you for the opportunity to provide this input. Uh, I wish you luck in the remainder of the process and I look forward to you continuing to have citizen input. Uh, on this process. We've all, we all will have to live with your choice, so make it a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> next we have uh, uh, Mr. Rick Jones. Board members, uh, thank you for the opportunity of being able to talk to you about this uh, very important issue of um, choosing the next superintendent of schools for Newport News. Um, I'm probably going to uh, 
address it from a little bit different position. I've we've heard several people talk about the uh, wonderful things that are going on in their fear of of um, of, of having change in administration, uh, something that may keep the th the, the programs that we have or change the programs in a way that be adversely affecting our students. And, um, but I feel a little bit different. I think that we've had the same administration for quite a few years. She was a continuation of the administration we had in the past. And I think that one of the things that uh, we have to be concerned about is, um, is, uh, is that we need to find someone, and whether it's inside or outside, that is not afraid of making change. I think one of the things that we've done in Newport News for many, many years is that we've made um, this motto thing that we have, college, career, and citizen ready. I think it's like uh, almost backwards. I think the most important things that we can do for our students is make sure that they're citizens and they're good citizens. And if they're good citizens, they'll want to get a job and they will, you know, we have to give them the opportunities to, to for career um, and, and for uh, the types of programs that we've done away with in Newport News uh, that are not college programs, that don't prepare students for college. In Newport News, less than half of our students go to college, but we make it the most important thing and try to prepare everybody to go to college. We need more occupational things in Newport News. <clears throat> I would like to see somebody from the outside that, um, or inside that would be willing to make a change like that, that would be willing to step up and, and, and say, you know, we've been doing things a little bit wrong. Uh, and I think that the, one of the things with people inside is that people have ownership for programs. When you have ownership for programs and you've been a part of something for a long time, you're very hesitant. You want to make it work because it was your program. Um, and it, and everybody thinks that we've been doing such a wonderful job in Newport News for such a long period. Some of the things that we need to consider is back in 2000, when we first started the accreditation program, we had one school fully accredited. Three years later, we had 20 schools fully accredited. Significant change. When Dr. Kilgore was first year in superintendent, and it wasn't, it was due to the previous administrators, 34 out of the 39 schools were accredited. It's almost 90%. Now we have only 50%, 55% of our schools fully accredited. We're not, we're not on the path we need to be on, okay? We're, there are not enough of our students being successful in the SOLs. Now we do a lot for our students that are college bound. We do an incredible job of preparing our students that are college bound, but half of our students don't go to college. We have way too many students that are not reading on grade level in third, fourth grade. And we need to do something about that. And this administration has had 15 years to fix that problem, and it hasn't fixed the problem. I would like to, to at least you know, consider the fact that we are not where we want to be, and we haven't been going there fast enough, you know, 15 years to fix the problems that we've had at some schools that are consistently um, not accredited is, is, is not and the, uh, the stuff I'm reading in the newspaper is I just don't like reading those headlines year after year with the excuses that we, that we give. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, next we have um, Alani Colson. Is that correct? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Lonnie Colson. I live up in the North District of Newport News. I have had children in Newport News School Division or grandchildren in Newport News School Division since 1980. I think that I'm quite familiar with the division. Uh, we've had children to leave the division go on to college, do extremely well. We're proud of what they've accomplished here in Newport News. But two things I would like to ask of you is number one, that in your search for a new superintendent, that you meet out in the community. Talk with the people that have children in this division. 
Listen to the people that have students in your division. Okay? I am familiar with the successes of Newport News School Division. But we have some wanting areas. Okay? We need to be aware of that. If you have a school in your division that tells children after they failed a math course, oh, you can repeat it. If that becomes part of your fix, we've got a problem. We've got a big problem. Again, I wish you extremely well. My number one request to you is that you go out into the community, listen to the folks that have children in your division because a lot of what we're hearing from the school board and school board members, the parents would not recognize as their part of their school division. I thank you so very much. I wish you the best in this search, but I hope it will be a national search. I hope it will be a national search. We need the change. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, next, we have um, uh, Ernest Thompson. Good afternoon, school board members. Um, first for me, but when we get to talking about this wonderful person that we are looking for, it almost like he's coming from out of, he or she is coming from out of space. You gotta <laughs> lord them and hang all these wonderful things upon their shoulders that they, when they land here, suddenly all the problems will be solved. That's an impossibility. But we need to talk to you all, who then talks to the leader. And then this leader is supposedly the person that will lead you. And in fact, we vote for you, so if we can't talk to you, you can't talk to the leader. So I'm trying to imagine in my mind what kind of person will fit the prescription that we so desire. And um, it's possible to find that person but that person has to lead you all. And then we send you to listen to us, and if that don't happen, we still stagnated. So I grew up in Newport News in the East End, attended Huntington High School. Well, back then, during that time, there was total segregation. And you know something, segregation blessed us. And the reason I say it blessed us because segregation was rampant all over the country, so that even instructors with master's degrees and PhDs, they couldn't get jobs. So where did they come? They came to Huntington High School. And we were blessed to be taught by the best that prepared us for the future. So we need somebody that's full of integrity, not just the leader, but our school, school board members, full of integrity that when, when they say they're going to do something, we trust that as though when they come for that vote, I'm giving you this vote to say that you're going to do what we request of you. And so this person has to have the capacity to listen. All of the beautiful words have been said by everybody to come up here of the kind of person we, if we can find a person like that, my God, we've done wonderful. But even that person can do nothing if it's not for you all, because you all have to carry that out. When we want Huntington High School redone when we tell you know they tell me go to the city council then you go to city council they said go to the school board you come to the school board i mean it's like ring around the roses you know and and so that's why i mean about integrity this person has to be a person of integrity unquestionable integrity as i hope that all of you all demonstrate if we find that in the person, and I, I mean, I can hear all of the wonderful things. He needs to listen. She needs to listen. Da, da, da. Yeah, you hear me. But that don't mean when I walk away from here, the next person is the last word you will remember. So it, to me, what's important, especially when it comes to our history, somebody has to understand what Newport News is really about. Did I run out of time? Oh. <laughs> well, hallelujah. Integrity. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Um, um, before I recognize this person, um, we have another city council member here. 
uh, with us, and she has a card, Miss Sharon Scott. And also, before you get up, I also recognize uh, Mr. Thaddeus Holloman, <coughs> a past school board member as well. Yes. So, Mrs. Scott, please come up. Thaddeus has a card, too. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> it is an honor to be here tonight, and I just want to say um, um, I'm very appreciative of what you all are doing here tonight, and I appreciate your service to our city on behalf of our children here in Newport News. Um, I, I just came in and I heard some of the comments that people were saying, and, and I think that what we need is somebody who is a combination of all the things that you've said. And I wanted to say everything that has been said has been said, but everybody who needed to say it hasn't said it, so I'm her. Uh, but, uh, but more importantly, uh, we have some issues here in the city of Newport News, and, and a lot of our issues are urban and they are cultural issues. And no one wants to really address the fact that um, uh, the majority of the children in the Newport News Public School are of color, African American, or of some other descent other than uh, the, the, the majority. And uh, I think that the person that comes in needs to have a grasp on that. It needs to be somebody who has already addressed urban issues. We have kids who they are going to school, they're hungry when they go to school. They are not clean when they go to school. They may or may not have coats, they may not have books, they may not have pencils, paper, whatever. So we need somebody who can understand and not judge our children so harshly. And I'm, I'm listening, I'm, I'm speaking from both sides, from a, a councilwoman's perspective and also from a citizen of Newport News. Some of the calls that I get and, and the reason that kids are expelled and the reason that you know this can't happen and that can't happen, we, we need somebody who's gonna be more inclusive and who's gonna think about the total child, not just the fact that you know we have kids in the public school system, and I think that um, that person uh, could really make a change in our city because our our school system drives our economy here in the city of Newport News, whether you realize it or not. When people are looking to locate here for business, when they're looking to move here, they're looking at what the school system is going doing. So we need somebody who can take this school system to the top of the map and we can be one of the most productive, most progressive school systems here in Hampton Roads. And um, I don't know what the magic formula is, but when you're looking at candidates, I need you to look at their backgrounds and look at, look at what they are willing to do and look at where they've come from. Uh, I, I have to say this, uh, when we were looking for a city manager the last time, it was one person who wanted to be our city manager. His city was, uh, I think it was 87, 88% Caucasian. So what would he know about a city where over half of the population are of color or African American? And that's what you have to look at. You can't look at just that the person has impeccable credentials. You have to look at where they've come from and where they think they can take us. And you know what, I don't know whether that person is here in Newport News or not, but it is your job and I just want you all to know that I'm behind you 100%. I'm supporting you. Because uh, my citizens, and some of which are standing here behind me, looking at the back of my head, they're ex they're holding me accountable for what you guys do. So I'm expecting you all to make your best judgment possible, and I hope that you will continue to involve the citizens in the process. As uh, I think Mr. Coulson said earlier, you have to take this meeting to the public, and I know that is online. But uh, oftentimes people won't say online what they really want to say, and it may be because they're not articulate enough to, uh, to state it. But when you get people in your face, they speak from their heart. So I hope that you all would take this across the community as you continue to, to do your search. And I just want to thank you again for your service. Also, I have to thank Newport News Public Schools for what they did in con contributing to the um, 16th anniversary of the One City Holiday Food Job. Some of your schools were involved, and I was glad I had an opportunity to go there because some of your poorest schools tried to contribute to this, to this event, and they were, I hope, the recipients of what we had. So just thank you again for your service. God bless. Thank you. Uh, next we have uh, Thaddeus Holloman. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the school board, Mr. Nichols, Ms. Bradley, and Ms. Hinton, and all who gathered here. Um, thank you for this opportunity to address the board regarding this most important matter that you are considering. Uh, I am a former school board member, so I can appreciate the complexity of the issues that you all are considering. I know it's not an easy task that's before you. 
but you are well equipped to make that decision, and I applaud you for using uh, or for or rather um, embarking upon a national search for this particular person that we need to hire in Newport News. Um, we want the best candidate for this position. And in my opinion, we can't know who that best person is if we don't cast a broad net. So it requires you to follow through on your national search intentions. Uh, if the person that you end up selecting is local, so be it. You will have still feel comfortable knowing that you have picked absolutely the best person for the position. So I applaud you for that. I thank you for this opportunity to speak to you and for this opportunity that you've given the citizens to give you input. I too have completed the online survey. Um, and I agree with many of the comments that have been made previously regarding the qualities and the characteristics of a superintendent. But I think one of the most important things is that he be a strong, he or she rather, be a strong instructional leader. Uh, we have to be able to teach all of the children so that they all can excel. So instructional leadership is the first and foremost thing, in my opinion, that you should consider. Other, several other factors have already been mentioned to include uh, innovative and creative thinking, uh, support for administrators, teachers, and staff, uh, good community and business relations, and certainly in light of our recent um, climate, good relations with city government officials. We have to be able to uh, conduct the affairs of our city in a manner that is um, productive for our citizens and, and for the better use of taxpayer dollars. So thank you for this opportunity and I wish you luck in your um, difficult task. Thank you. <clears throat> so that ends the cards. Are there any more cards? Are there any more speaker cards? Are there any more speaker cards? And so on behalf of the, if there's none, on behalf of the school board, we thank you for your comments. The board would also like to remind the parents and students, staff, members, the community, that there's still time to um, hear your, voice your, voice your comments. Uh, you can go to the website, www.nnschools.org. Uh, you can access through your laptop, through your desktop, through your mobile device. And the survey will be available until January 21st. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, thank you for again. Uh, we just want to thank you for all your comments. Uh, we wholeheartedly take them seriously, and uh, sure we will do a national search. Okay. We need a motion to close public hearing. Okay. Do we have a motion to close the public hearing? Move to close the public hearing. You heard the second. Motion. You heard the motion in the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Center, could you please call the roll? <clears throat> Mr. Stodgehill? Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. And Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 7 0. The public hearing is closed. Okay. All right. We're going to move the agenda then uh, next to um, action items. Um, I okay. Oh, whatever. <clears throat> Would you like to, I'd like to take a break? Y'all need anybody need a break? Huh? Y'all want to take a break? Two minutes? And y'all need a break? Two minutes? Y'all think y'all need a break? Just take three minutes, right? Take three minutes, right? We will take um, we will take a three minute break, and then we'll be right back. At this time, um, we're going to move. We skipped over an item for the sake of the public hearing, and so we'll move back to item number three, three point oh one and three point oh two, a consent agenda. Can I get a motion for approval? So moved. Second. second. You heard the motion in the second. Um, <clears throat> now it's time for the question. There being none, uh, please call the roll. Mr. Starchill. Four. Mr. Ashby. Four. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown's right there. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown. Just Mr. Brown. <laughs> Mr. Brown, we have the consent agenda. Approval.
Four. <laughs> Mr. Eve. Four. Mr. Harris. Four. Mr. Hunter. Four. Ms. Simon. Four. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you, uh, Mr. Brown, for joining us. <laughs> we'll move to our action items um, 5.01 personnel actions. Yes, and we do have a personnel action tonight. Uh, tonight, it's my honor to recommend Stephen Arrington for the position of middle school assistant principal at Dozier Middle School. Um, let me tell you a little bit about Mr. Arrington. <coughs> Mr. Arrington is currently serving as the band director at Heritage High School, so if he looks familiar, he does lead most of our banquets and awards assemblies, uh, ceremonies towards the end of the year. Uh, Mr. Arrington was with us uh, between 2007 and 2010 as an elementary music teacher. Uh, from 2013 to present, he's been the band director at Heritage High School and also Huntington Middle School. Um, uh, Mr. Arrington in 2006 received his Bachelor of Arts in Music Education from Hampton University. And in 2017, his uh, Master of Art in Educational Leadership from the George Washington University. So once again, it's my honor to recommend to you Stephen Arrington for the position of middle school assistant principal at Dozier Middle School. Go ahead and bring the motion. We need a motion approved. I have to submit a motion for Mr. Arrington to be approved by the school board for the position. Second. You heard the motion. You heard the second. Uh, time for the question. There being none, uh, Ms. Hinton, please call the roll. Mr. Starchill. Four. Mr. Ashby? Four. Mr. Brown? Four. Mr. Ely? Four. Mr. Harris? Four. Mr. Hunter? Four. And Ms. Simons? Four. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll move to item 6, 6.01 Equity and Success for English Language Learners. And we'll have Ms. Nancy Sweat and her team. Good afternoon, Mr. Hunter, Mr. Nichols, and members of the board. Um, it's our pleasure tonight to bring you an update about our ESL, kind of an overview of our comprehensive ESL program. We serve English language learners through a rich structure of various programs and supports for our students, for the families, um, and we're just here tonight to talk to you a little bit about that. Firstly, I am excited to share. Okay, thank you. Firstly, I am excited to share our population growth among our English learners. We have grown from 223 students in 2002 to 1,535 students currently. That is a 600% growth in 15 years. It is enriching to our schools globally and culturally, and ha it has given us an opportunity to meet and provide opportunity to um, respond to the needs of these students. And it's very exciting that Newport News is a home to such diverse students. Um, here is the breakdown of where our students are as far as the English language learners. You see that the, that the majority of our students are in elementary at 57%. It's actually 67% if you include our pre-K programs. And that gives us even more time with the students. So when they come to us so early, we really appreciate that because it gives us more time to expose them to, the, to our standards, to the academics, and of course to the American language, to English and to the American culture. Um, they also represent, as you see in the other bubble, um, 55 languages, the majority in Spanish at 63%, but you will al also notice like 7% in Arabic and 5% in Swahili. So we have 55 languages represented in our district among our English language learners. As far as our home countries, um, you see there um, the eight top home countries of our ESL students, our English language learners. You see that um, US born citizens represent 47% of our ESL population, but that means there is another home language, an at home language, a first and a native language for those students. It's not about where they were born, it's about their home language. Um, and then you also see 8% of our students come from uh, Puerto Rico and 8% of our students come from Afghanistan. So those are our eight top, but we have 57 countries represented in our ES, in our English language learners. Um, now I'm going to turn it over, over to April Vasquez, who is our ESL supervisor. 
she's going to share proficiency rates as well as go into some details about the programs and the supports that we offer these students. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right, this next slide shows you our language proficiency rates and along with our population trend of growth, you can kind of see how our students have grown even in their language proficiency. For, so for instance, level one are our students that come to us with little to no English. We have had a trend of enrolling a significant amount of students every single year that are level one students. So they do have more gaps to fill in their language proficiency and also in their schooling. Level two students are students that tend to understand some English, may be able to speak in simple phrases and understand basic <coughs> commands. Level three students may be able to converse um, using social <coughs> language, but academic language is much more difficult for level three students. Level four and level five students are continuing to grow in their proficiency towards native English speaking and are able to use academic language at that point in time. So kind of shows you a little bit of our trend across um, Newport News Public Schools in how our student population falls among the levels of proficiency, which impacts our programming to meet the needs, especially for our most intensive <coughs> students that are level one. Oh. I'm not so good with that. <laughs> So our ESL mission here in Newport News is to serve culturally, culturally and linguistically diverse students whose native language is one other than English. All right, I'm proud to say that we do support our English learners at all of our early childhood sites and all of our elementary schools. In order to meet the need of our growing population of students with limited to no schooling and limited to no English, we also have a newcomer program that works with students in second through fifth grade that are level one at both Palmer and McIntosh Elementary. And we also have, in partnership with World Language, a dual language immersion program at Watkins and Saunders, in particularly immersion in Spanish. Our secondary programs, we have center sites. So in middle school, we support English learners specifically at Dozier and Gildersleeve, which is where we have been for the past several years. And we support them both in the English core content classes with ESL support, and also in order to meet our increasing need of students with limited to no schooling, we have a transition English class for students coming out of a newcomer program to go into because they're still learning some basics in literacy before going into the core English um, six through eight <coughs> classroom. This year, our newcomer center in middle school is actually being hosted at Crittenden Middle. In addition, in high school, we have center programs at Denby High School and at Warwick High School. At Denby, we have most of our newcomer program supports. And so you see we have services from 9th through 12th grade at Denby High School and 11th and 12th grade at Warwick High School. Similar to middle school, we support English core content with ESL collaborate, collaborative teaching and support in those classrooms. And we also have standalone ESL English classes of which students may receive an English credit. We also have a language and cultural support for students first coming into the country so that they can have some extra support in acculturating to U.S. schools and U.S. culture and they can receive a world language credit for those courses. All right, next you'll see our ESL performance trends. What you may note in our performance trend, especially in English, is that there is a gap that we still <coughs> need to fill with our same age English peers. A lot of that is due to the level of literacy that our students are coming into with very limited English. But they are following along the same trend line as all of our students in Newport News Public Schools. So they are continuing to make gradual growth, but there is a gap that needs to be met. However, in math proficiency, you'll see that that gap is very much closing. Math tends to be more of a universal language, so if there is some prior schooling in mathematics, that does translate a lot more easily um, for our students, and they are much more successful in the mathematics realm. All 
right? Similarly, in science and history, our students do have a lot more difficulty with the academic features of language. As you saw in the previous slide, our, we have an extensive amount of level one through level three students. And so we're really trying to build our curriculum and programming around building more academic language in for our students so that they are growing in understanding and speaking, listening, reading, and writing academically. Ultimately, our goal is for our students to be college career and citizen ready. And this is something that Newport News Public Schools really does shine in, even above and beyond the state's trend. This past year, we had an 87.8% .8 graduation rate for our English learner population. So on this data trend, you see the English learner growth and you see our new, all Newport News student growth. In that calculation, last year, we only had one advanced diploma, and this year we had 10 advanced diplomas in our ESL department. So that's very exciting to have continued growth towards more advanced placement courses for our students. I did want to make note that the state trend for graduation rate for English learners is actually 73.8%. So we do exceed beyond that number. And that's very exciting to see that we are closing the gap of equity for our English learners in the long run, ultimately, at graduation. <coughs> Some additional supports, just to make you aware of these. Um, we have a welcome center that at, when stu students and families come initially to enroll in our division, they go to the Welcome Center and they are greeted with an assessment specialist who helps guide them through the process and um, actually screens all of our students to see how they qualify for language services and what programming would be most supportive for that student. And we have an administrative registrar there as well that helps guide our families through the registration process. We use language line, as you noted earlier in the slides, we have uh, 55 languages represented and we don't speak all of those languages. So language line services helps provide us with interpretation so that our families can understand what is going on and understand the registration process. We also house our ESL school and family engagement coach at our Welcome Center who works extensively with our families and gives extra training to our families, our English learner families, through an orientation to Newport News Public Schools and helps train them in understanding what our calendar is and what U.S. <coughs> schools um, encompasses even culturally for our families. And so this next slide actually highlights the program that we use in Newport News. It's called Parents as Educational Partners. And we actually provide transportation for families that need transportation to this, um, this training. And we provide um, extensive tutoring for the students while the parents are in training. And so this year we have an orientation, as I mentioned, going over basics of Newport New Schools, the grading system as well, which can be quite different culturally for some families. And then we also have some topical sessions that we offer that go into more depth for our families on um, magnet programs and different resources that we provide as a school division to all of our families. And we also provide um, interpreters for all of those trainings. So now I would like to introduce you to one of our students who was in our newcomer program in middle school last year. And she wrote a beautiful story about pretty much a comparison of her life here with her life in her home country. So I'd like to welcome Georgetta Malamba to the podium. <coughs> and she is joined tonight by her mother in support and we also have an interpreter here as well so that her mother understands everything tonight. <coughs> Hello, my name is Georgia and I want to talk about my story. Sorry. <coughs> okay. On my country we go to river and we get water and we get water and wash dishes and we get water on the river and we wash clothes, and when we finish, we go to countries, and we do fi fire, and we make food, 
and we go to the river and get water again and and we walk and we go to the to wash the uh, we go take shower and night tonight the tonight we go to the to bed and sleep and Sunday we go to church and come back home. My mother said go to the river and go to get water. I, I, and I said I don't get I don't go I are we not going to to the river to get water and my mother said we're not eating until we did get water. <laughs> That's kind of a summary of our current students and programs and supports that we offer in our English as a Second Language program. And we love the fact that we have such a diverse group in bringing um, more diversity into the city of Newport News. Okay, so questions. Okay, anybody have questions? Hey, go ahead, Mrs. Simon. So I'm curious, I love um, Georgetta's story was she talking about her home country life? Yes. And where where is that? Where's home? Where what where did you move here from? Tanzania. Where? Tanzania. 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 Mm -hmm. And does she does she like coming to school in Newport News? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Better than carrying water from the river? <laughs> Well, thank you so much for, for coming and, and sharing your story. I, I think that was, that was really neat. And I'm, I'm just so proud to be able to provide girls like Georgetta with a world-class education here in Newport News Public Schools. And I'm so proud of all the work that you all are doing. You know, we, we had a wave of refugees come to Newport News. And not a lot of people realize that. But um, we have such a great, innovative <clears throat> staff and administration. You know, you guys rose to the challenge and are doing all these wonderful programs to make sure that families are settled in. You know, Catholic Charities is great, but they're gone after a couple months, and the schools are here for these families. So I just really appreciate all this hard work. I, I think it's wonderful and something our, our whole city should really be very, very proud of. Okay. Any any other? Oh, Mr. Brown. Uh, a few questions uh, in regards to uh, this. Uh, one, congratulations. I uh, got to see this program in action. I think we um, see saw some of the features of it during the summers uh, a few uh, summers ago uh, when we started to have a greater influx of students from other countries that we put this program in place. And so it's really great to see uh, things coming to fruition in terms of the hard work that has been done uh, and see the progress that that's being made. I wanted to ask about specifically, though, a couple of questions on. Uh, we do see that we have had an increase in number of uh, student, international students, uh, but uh, what is the trend line for the number of teachers uh, to teach right. English uh, <coughs> ESL teachers? Uh, what is the trend line on that? Uh, is that increasing, decreasing, or, or staying the same? Um, in regards to over the past couple of over years? The past, over the past couple of years, um, yes. On average, we've added about at least two teachers a year. And last year, we added three teachers during the school year because of the influx. So, um, Not to give away the next presentation, but uh, we do have uh, looking at even more ESL teachers uh, for the <coughs> next year because our trend line um, looks to continue along that same line. So we have added as we go through, because uh, it's a specialized service. We've also added uh, professional development programs. We have a current one with William & Mary, uh, where our current uh, teachers get a master's degree to be a reading specialist, but also an ESL endorsement. Mm -hmm. In doing that, they stay with us longer. They have to. Uh, part of our deal. Yeah. So we're getting people smarter in this area, too. So you don't actually have to be an ESL teacher. You can be a core teacher, teach math, science, or so forth, and have that that piece as well but yes increasing numbers okay, great mm -hmm. <clears throat> the other question was just around the gra uh, graduation rates what we saw is that there was a very starting 2013 we made really um, good positive uh, gains and a trend line that's that's moving upwards uh, and then we saw a slight dip 
um, from 2016 to 2017 in terms of there being starting to be at a, a gap there. So it looked like we had almost completely closed the gap, but then the gap uh, reopened. Uh, and I'd just be interested to know what, um, what if anything, uh, explains the explains that gap reopening again. Mm -hmm. I mean, and to be honest, our numbers are quite low too. So that's why you do have a little bit of a trend <clears throat> line that's going all over the place, especially at the beginning. Um, so sometimes it's the difference of two students, um, and so that changes because the numbers, the denominators low as well so that has some explanation to it um, also that's our first group from our first influx of level one students at the high school level so we're making strides but we need to continue to make strides moving forward okay. anyone else okay. Right. Yes, so, I, I noticed um, that you know the dramatic increase in the number of ESL students. That's pretty dramatic from you know, the 200s in 2003 all the way into the 1500s. Um, so we have a lot more students coming in needing you know, that um, focus and that, you know, overcoming that challenge. The graduation rate seems to speak for itself that we're, you know, we're, we're successful even though you know, we're not as successful as a typical you know, student in the, in the school division. But I do think that the graduation rate at 87% is, um, speaks that we're, we are actually achieving the mission. In terms of the number of students in the higher levels, is our goal to, to be, do, are we focusing on trying to be successful in the, the middle skill level, or is our goal to try to move them into you know, the, the academic uh, academic you know, <coughs> proficiency level, you know, what, what's our objective in that area? So in regards to language proficiency, correct? Um, so our goal is for all of our students to move into that academic language proficiency level. Um, it usually tends to take, um, even research-wise, at least seven to mm -hmm. ten years to gain academic English. A lot of our students are quickly moving to level three, and then level three to level four, it's a little bit more of a transition for them. So just building in more supports and also, um, as Ms. Mr. Nichols mentioned, more training for teachers, um, even through our UED session specifically to address classroom teachers and how they can build and implement some strategies um, in their classroom for all their students to build academic vocabulary. Yeah, so it is the goal to move towards that full proficiency academically. And to do that, we've got to have them for, you know, a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of our students actually exit in third or fourth grade from English Learner Services that have started with us in pre-K. <clears throat> so that shows a good trend of our students that are making that proficiency that are with us from the beginning. Some of the difficulty lies when they come in middle school and high school as a level one the gap is much larger for them. So moving them along that continuum does take a little bit more time and effort. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh. No, go ahead. Oh, yeah. okay. Actually, I'll be quick. Um, I just appreciate the innovativeness and just a couple questions that I have. My first statement is something which I heard from, uh, from a um, presenter named Dr. Edna O'Connor, and she said, if I can't learn the way you teach, then teach me the way I learn. Mm -hmm. And I think that's being implemented as far as the instructional practices um, that, that are happening. And I know it was mentioned in reference to finding the teachers, and I don't know if maybe Mr. Nichols, but wasn't it several years ago that we hired a, a large amount of ESL teachers? Like two? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the school system looking at that, and I love what you said in reference to um, us being receptive to diversity. And understanding that that is that is key and critical. That is 21st century. That is the trend. And for our school system to to not only adopt and acclimate to that, but to receive that, to embrace that, and to meet the needs of, of wonderful, wonderful students like Georgetta, I think it's key and critical um, for us to happen. Can you share with me um, the amount of children that are coming in? Percentage of free and reduced lunch. And if you don't know, you can just get back to me. I'm I, know, sure I know that's not a good thing. Um, but just, just want to you know, because obviously we're meeting their needs academically, but I'm sure New Point News Public mm -hmm. Schools is meeting their, their needs that way also, which is really, really very, very good. And then lastly, I know we've discussed the graduation rate, and it's, it's 
moving up. Uh, but I think I saw, saw a statistic recently that Newport News Public Schools graduation rate for English as second learners is higher than the state. Yes. That's correct. Okay, so you know, we know we still have a way to go, but we're higher than the states on that level, which is really very, very good. So growth, expansion, and the <coughs> things in which we're doing, um, but hats off to, to making that imprint and that impact in reference to um, our students in reference that fall in that category. So thank you so very much. Thank you for all of your support. Um, just to quote, the state graduation rate for L's is 73.8%. Okay. So significantly different. Good. Wow. Yeah. Any other questions? <coughs> None. Thank you. There being none. Thank, thank you for you the everyone. wonderful report. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll, move on, we'll move on to item number 6.02, the budget update. Is that Ms. Russo will give us an update today? Thank you, Mr. Hunter, members of the board, Mr. Nichols, good evening. Uh, it's my pleasure this evening to give you an update on uh, our 2019 budget. Of course, we are just getting started with the budget process, and so um, I'm going to share tonight with, what, uh, tonight with you what we do know, and there's a whole lot that we don't know, so I'll tell you a little bit about what we don't know. Um, an important part of our budget process every year is getting the state's budget, and uh, the now former governor released his budget on December the 18th, so we have that information. And then another important part of our budget process <coughs> is our departments looking at their needs for the next year. And they've done that, and we were able to meet with them in December to review their needs. So uh, tonight, I'm going to review what we've learned in those two parts of our budget process. First, some highlights from the governor's budget. Um, this is the first year in the state's biennial budget process, and so you know that the state re-benchmarks all of their SOQ and other direct aid programs, so they've done that. Um, they also update their composite index, and um, our <coughs> composite index went down, as you can see on the slide, from 28.21, which is what it's been for the last two years, uh, and to 27.81, which it will be for 2019 and 20. And the significance of that number is that's what the locality will need to pay, that's the percentage that the locality will need to pay <coughs> of our SOQ uh, cost from the state. So. Um, it seems a little counterintuitive, but we're always kind of glad to see that we're relatively less uh, uh, wealthy uh, compared to our neighbors around the state because it means that the state will pay more of our cost. <laughs> um, the uh, next thing on the uh, item uh, of our summary here is that the VRS rate has decreased. Now that rate, you know, has been going up for the last several years, and so we were pleased to see that it's uh, having a little respite. Um, so it's dropped from 16.32% to 15.68%, uh, which saves us nearly a million dollars, just to see it, so you can see the mag magnitude of that change. Uh, and also the retiree health care credit has dropped as well. So um, those are the most significant changes that are in the governor's budget. Um, what's not in the governor's budget is what's the last item on this slide, and that is there's no salary increase in the 2019 budget. Um, for 2019. There is uh, in the governor's budget a salary increase of 2% for the second year of the budget, 2020. It doesn't start until December of 2019, so it's really only for half a year, uh, but that gets a little ahead of where we are right now, so we'll worry about 19 now and 20 a year from now. Um, taking the information that we got from the state uh, budget, we've put together what we expect to see from our revenue. And this is a kind of a glimpse of that. This is our revenue by major uh, category, as we usually show it to you. Uh, starting with our state revenue, which is our most uh, significant category of revenue. You can see that we're expecting a $6.1 million increase in the state numbers. Um, we don't have any information yet from the city, so uh, that's to, to come. Uh, and our federal revenue right now, we're showing that as flat. About two-thirds of our federal revenue is impact aid, and you know that we survey all of our military-connected students every year. Those cards have uh, been uh, received, and we'll finish going through those by the end of this month. Uh, suffice to say that so far, it looks like we're going to be down a little bit in terms of number of military-connected students. Right now, we've shown this number as flat because we expect to see a slight uptick in, in Medicaid, <coughs> but uh, more about that by the end of this month. Our last category of revenue is uh, described as other revenue. It's everything else, or sometimes I call it the cats and dogs of the budget. But anyway, um, we're showing that as being up $300,000, and that's due to an increase in uh, E-rate that we expect to get for next year. 
Um, as we look at next year's budget and determining what the priorities are, you'll notice on this list many similarities to this year's budget as well as last year's budget and, and several budgets. Uh, the priorities at this level don't really change that much year to year. Um, first on the list, and probably uh, always first on the list, is a salary increase for all of our employees. Um, key to attracting talent is being able to be competitive with the marketplace, and so salary is always an important part of that. It's not all of the, uh, what we need to do, but it's a large part to be attractive to potential hires. So um, salary increases on the list, as well as continuing to reduce the compression in our salary scales. And we've talked with you a lot about that at a retreat uh, in October, particularly with respect to um, teacher salaries, but for our support staff as well. And we've been working on that, you know, for the last several years, and we need to continue to do that work. We are not yet finished. And then um, as we met with our uh, department <coughs> leaders, we uh, learned of some additional staffing needs, and as Mr. Nichols revealed, um, part of that is some teachers, and some of those teachers happen to be ELL teachers. Just to tell you what level the state funds, the state staffs ELL or funds staffing for ELL teachers at 17 teachers per thousand ELL students. So if you do the math on the uh, student teacher ratio, it's 58 students per teacher. So try that when you don't speak the language. I don't know how they do it. It is the most mysterious part of what we do. We have very high respect for what April and her staff is able to pull off. Um, then in the non-compensation areas uh, with regard to priorities for next year, not surprisingly, again, technology is at the top of the list, and you'll see in a minute the uh, magnitude of those numbers. Um, but technology refresh is uh, important every year. You know, technology doesn't last forever. In fact, it lasts a lot uh, fewer years than we'd like for it to or need to it for it to. But um, that's on our list for next year, also replacing educational materials. Those of you that have been on the board with us for a little while know that we've been stringing along some of our stuff for a while as the economy has been down. And uh, some of that stuff has kind of given up the ghost, and so some of it must be replaced. So that's in the budget for next year as a request at this point. And then um, also cash capital for our building maintenance. Our buildings are uh, continuing to age, and we aren't getting to some of the needs uh, quickly enough with our capital budget, and so some of it needs to uh, move over to the operating budget. Just a really quick reminder about where we com uh, compare with the neighbors. Uh, other school divisions in the area with regard to teacher pay. This is something of an eye test. I'm sure you can't read the numbers, but if you look at the yellow, that is where we are compared to our peers. I think you can kind of get the gist. Um, the top is good, the bottom is not so good. Uh, the columns start with uh, new teachers, so um, to my left. Uh, teachers as they come in are starting teacher pay. And then the second column is teachers with five years of experience. The middle column, teachers with 10 years of experience. The fourth column with 15 years of experience. And the last column with 20 years of experience. So you can see that uh, we start off kind of in the middle of the pack. We move up for five and 10 year uh, teachers. And then we start a little bit of a descent, which is something of a problem. So that's why we still need to work on our teacher scales. Just to re remind you, I know we talked a lot about that in October <coughs> with you. Oops, too fast. Oh, patience, really patience. Um, <clears throat> so. With regard to the salary increases for next year, well, we thought we would start the budget conversation with a salary increase of 3% for all staff. Now, whether or not we'll be able to actually make that happen is a big question at this point. You saw the revenue uh, that we were expecting. Because a salary increase of 3% for all staff for next year would cost $6.7 million. And if you were uh, watching the revenue slide, and I'll summarize it for you in a minute, um, right now, we're aware of $6.4 in increases. So right now, we wouldn't be able to make that happen. Uh, and then if we wanted to continue our compression adjustment work uh, for teachers, um, $1.3 million in compression uh, money would allow us to make a $1,000 increase in our starting pay. Uh, and that would not put us at the top of the list, even still. Uh, and others, of course, won't stand still while we move. So that's another problem. <coughs> And then for our custodial, instructional assistants, security, and nursing staffs, uh, you recall that in this year's budget, we were able to increase the minimum pay for those support groups to bring them um, to more competitive positions. What we'd like to do in next year's budget is, as we, hit, as we did for our bus drivers, um, give the more experienced folks some compression relief as well. <coughs> uh, to, to do all of that would, would cost $2 million. It's unlikely, I would say, at this point that we'll be able to do that, but um, we probably need to do some of it at least. 
Uh, and then the last item on the uh, salary increase list are new positions. And I mentioned uh, that seven of these, I didn't mention the number, I don't think, but seven of these are ELL teachers uh, to deal with some of the um, issues that April was talking about. Um, and there are a number of other positions. I will tell you that it's unlikely that all of those positions will uh, persist as we move forward in balancing the budget. But just so that you have a, an idea of where we're starting from with what department leaders believe that they need. The finger tonight. OK, so that's the personnel side of the budget. Looking at the non-personnel side of the budget, um, you can see that the total requests are $10 million, just a little over $10 million in a new request for next year. Again, probably not going to happen, but just so you know what the departments believe that they need to do the work that they need to do. And I mentioned that uh, technology was a large part of the request, and you can see really that the educational technology is that, and a large part of the infrastructure is also technology. So let me just tell you a few things that are in those lists. Um, the educational technology of $3.3 .3 million is um, comprised of laptop replacements for elementary and middle school teachers, which is about $1.7 million. You know that every four or five, sometimes six years, we try to replace teacher laptops. And so um, we're in that period for elementary and middle school teachers. And then you might recall that with the stimulus money, which seems like a, some ancient history, uh, we were able to buy smart boards for all of our classrooms. And some of those are really not in great shape. That was, of course, 10 years ago. Um, so smart board and projector upgrades or replacements need to be done. A uh, million dollars is currently in that number for that. You know that DSA will add a fifth grade next year, so we'll be fully a K-5 school. And we've been adding technology at every grade level as that grade level arrives. And so there's $120,000 for that and a few other small items to get us to the $3.3 million. Um, the infrastructure list totals $3 million and is largely, $2 million of that, is uh, to replace our voice over IP telephone system. It's getting a little long in the tooth as well. It doesn't last forever. Uh, you know that was what allowed us to put phones in our classrooms. For those of you that have been, Mr. Ashby might be the only one who remembers, but we didn't have phones in all of our classrooms. I uh, didn't mean to date you, Mr. Uh, Ashby. But anyway, um, we struggled to get that done. And voice over IP is a technology that enabled us to do that. But now those really need to be replaced. So that is the largest item. We also have uh, public address systems and master clock systems in our schools, some of which are uh, original equipment to the school and also need to be replaced. So there's $600,000. We've been doing that work as we can, a couple schools at a time, but um, you know they, they need to be done at some point. And then um, educational materials is that uh, green uh, slice of the pie, $2 million. There are um, any number of things in there. There's some uh, educational software. There's musical instruments. Uh, you would be surprised at what musical instruments cost, or maybe you wouldn't be, but I was. Um, there are library books, PE equipment, uh, the um, scoreboard at Todd. So lots of things, and it seems like a lot of money, and it is a lot of money, but when you have as many departments contributing to that, and with as long as the needs have been existing, um, it adds up pretty quickly. And then the last two smaller slices are building security. Uh, the largest part of that is our fire and intrusion detection system replacements. That's 620,000. And then um, expansion of our security cameras in our elementary schools is 200,000. So that's the building security. And last but not uh, <coughs> least on the list is uh, cash capital. And uh, these are just some projects that we uh, need to get to that are difficult to get to uh, with our capital budget, some gym floor replacements. Again, you'd be surprised at what that costs in our high schools and just some uh, HVAC component issues and things like that. So 832,000 really does not go a long way in uh, building maintenance, but something that we need to start shipping away at here. <coughs> okay, so um, the work that we're gonna be doing over the next six weeks is balancing the budget so that we have uh, a balanced budget to present to you um, in March. Uh, right now, as I mentioned, our projected revenue increase is um, $6.4 million. Now that number will change. I can't tell you today what it will be, but it will be different than that, I can assure you. Um, and then our requested expenditure increases on the personnel side, $11.5 million. Uh, on the non-personnel side, uh, 10, so $21.5 million. You can see that we have our work cut out for us to balance our budget um, for next year. Um, and here's the timeline. So, I mean, if we had forever to do it, it might be a little easier, but we need to have it done so that we can present to you a balanced budget on March the 13th. And then uh, you'll have a public hearing on the 20th. 
Uh, you're scheduled to approve the budget on the 27th so that we're able to have it to the city before April the 1st, which is the requirement. And then the city council will appropriate funding, hopefully for us, in May, <coughs> assuming that the General Assembly does their part. That's how it all works. It's a very similar calendar to what we do every year. So that's where we are at the moment. Uh, wish us well. Thank you. Any, any uh, comments? Yeah, I got a question. Uh, yes, go ahead, Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you for the briefing, uh, uh, Mayor Lou. Yes, sir. Uh, have we decided to do any joint uh, meetings with the city council prior to us approving? Uh, Mr. Our Harris, um, I can answer that question for you. Okay. And, um, <coughs> we plan to. Okay. To answer your question, we plan to. All right. I'm sorry, I don't have that on the calendar. I, I wasn't aware of that. So. Right. We'll, when we find out those dates, we'll put we on the have a date. For okay. You. Sounds good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I just want to say that I have to call each school board member individually because I, I do feel like as we're moving forward with, you know, getting a new superintendent <coughs> that, um, you know, we do as the two governing bodies of this great city of Newport News um, change our strategy, which I think it will be more effective that we at least have quarterly meetings so that um, you all are not coming to us with the unrealistic budget. I think that the improved communication from meetings where people can a ask questions and answer things and look at the funds we have available realistically as opposed to just bringing a budget to us that we know we can't find. I think it'll help us um, accomplish more through the schools for our children and our parents. So I'm, I'm really glad that um, Mr. Nichols, you have been receptive to the concept of us meeting and, and also you, Mr. Chairman, and I really appreciate that and look forward to the meeting. Thank you, thank you. We were, uh, we don't have dates yet, but uh, once the dates are there, we will. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Well, Mr. Mary Lou. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Brown. A uh, question around the custodial staff and instructional assistants on uh, security nurses. I'm interested to know <laughs> what um, the proposed increases would uh, make their minimum pay uh, go to. Well, we brought their minimum pay this year in 18 to the minimums that we share with you, and I can get you that information. I don't have it for all of them, but in order to um, be a little more competitive with the neighborhood, so we were able to do that. What we're proposing next year is that, you know, when we did, when we brought everyone to the new minimum, we created some compression with those who had more seniority. So as we did with the bus drivers, we'd like to take those more senior people and move them up the scale a little bit so that we relieve some of that compression. That's what we'd like to do next year for those categories of staff. Any more comments? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're gonna move the agenda. Uh, in your package, uh, 6.03, membership report, 6.04, attendance report, and 6.05, construction report. Those are part of your packages. Does anyone have any questions on that? If not, then we'll move on to uh, 6.06, .06, comments uh, by the acting superintendent. Good evening again, <coughs> thank you. Um, it is a pleasure to serve as the acting superintendent. Um, I had no idea my biography would be shared earlier today, <laughs> but it's, it's been a, a, a long, wonderful journey in Newport News starting as a teacher. And I really thank the school board for this opportunity. I look forward to working with each of you as we continue to advance student achievement. Uh, one of the quick initiatives to increase in communication <coughs> engagement is I've started two social media channels. Uh, family, students, and members of the community can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, for those of you asking about Facebook, the kids told me that Nobody's on Facebook, but I think a lot of people are. Uh, however, um, if you follow those channels, you can see um, sort of a day in the life of the superintendent. So you get to see the different meetings and the community pieces. Um, you get to see a lot of fun snow pictures. So if you ever know, want to know what we do and how we make decisions, there's a lot of interaction out there. Um, and it's been a great start interacting with kids and families through social media. Um, they get to see that you know you're a real person and you are doing the work alongside them and really trying to make the best decision for kids. <clears throat> Hold on to that. I got a decision for you at the end of this one. Um, you will see some of the smart work that our students and staff do. We have amazing things going on with our kids and our staff members, and it's just another way to highlight that and create uh, additional news opportunities. Uh, I want to invite our families in the community to join us for the All City Science, Engineering, and Technology Fair Saturday, January 27th at Heritage High School.
This fair will feature some of the most engaging experiments and technology innovations. Our kids will astound you with what they have researched and what they have found. Um, student presentations will be held from 8 to 12. And an engineering and design challenge. If you've never been a part of that, you must come. Um, if you're not there, just follow me on Twitter and Instagram. You'll see it happen live. Uh, we'll take place from 9 to 11, and the awards assembly will begin at 1. I also want to wish all of our secondary students well as they take their first semester exams. That's right. As of today, you do still have semester exams, which begin Monday, January 22nd. Please note that high school students will dismiss at 1040, Tuesday through Thursday, January 23rd through the 25th. And finally, you may have heard a loud cheer ring across Newport News at 6.30 today. That is when we announce that we will be closed tomorrow. Uh, we are expecting additional snowfall tomorrow. Uh, it is going to come during our transit as we transport kids to and from school. It's really just not worth the safety risk with our 28,000 kids. Uh, all we need is one accident, one problem. Um, and then we don't want to take that chance with our kids. So with the snowfall coming, we're going to go and uh, close schools for tomorrow, January 17th. Uh, please be reminded that our students are off from school on the 26th. It's a teacher work day and the market period. And to address missed instructional time on January 29th will be a regular school day. It was a professional development day. Stay tuned for how we're going to make up tomorrow. We'll have that information for you shortly. Once again, thank you. It's an honor to do this. Um, and have a wonderful evening. <coughs> thank you, Mr. Nichols. Uh, we are going to move the agenda to item number seven. Uh, another opportunity for to hear from comments from the citizens. Do we have any cards? I have no cards. There being none, uh, we'll move to uh, item number eight, uh, matters by the school board. And uh, Mr. Brown. <coughs> All right, well, I want to say uh, tonight that I'm uh, very honored to have our vice mayor and as well my councilwoman uh, Sharon Scott here uh, attending. <coughs> and thank you all for staying. You stayed all the way until the end. Uh, <coughs> we really appreciate that, uh, your engagement uh, and, uh, and attending here tonight in support. Uh, appreciate that very much. Uh, I also want to say congratulations to the students at Woodside who put together this uh, beautiful calendar. I actually got the chance, I started looking at these pictures. They really are, when they said that they were looking for the right lighting, uh, these are really just gorgeous digital um, photos that they took. Uh, you can really see um, great detail and, and the artistry that's here. Uh, it is pretty amazing, the, the professionalism of this calendar. It's, it's pretty uh, fantastic. And so I want to congratulate those students at Woodside uh, for putting this together. Uh, and it showcases the art that's going on around the city. So. Um, it is, it is really, when you look at all the art that we have in the city, it is something to behold that, it, that we really have a community treasure and I hope that uh, all citizens go out and check out the art that we have around the city. Uh, this is a great calendar, something that I'm gonna be taking and putting on my desk, so I really appreciate that. Is it for sale? Maybe, maybe, maybe it should be. And we'll, and we'll look at, maybe we'll look into that. <laughs> maybe it should be. Uh, uh, and then as well tonight, I wanna thank um, uh, everyone who came out and spoke. I really appreciate your comments. I was taking notes as you were speaking, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm listening very intently to what I'm hearing from the citizens, uh, and, and I want you to know that uh, everything that you tell me, I take to heart, uh, write it down, uh, and it will be analyzed. As, as people who know me, it will be analyzed and scrutinized, and I will compile it for the rest of the board. Uh, they know that, <laughs> and I will quote it back to them uh, as we go through the, the process. So I uh, realize that your comments are, are, not, are definitely um, going into uh, the process you are really shaping uh, who we choose as our next <coughs> superintendent uh, and so I appreciate all the citizens who uh, took part I want to also especially thank uh, my church um, my pastor uh, Pastor Everson and, and First Lady were out here tonight uh, that's where you all saw me uh, run out in the hallway I would, couldn't let them leave without uh, at least uh, uh, saying thank you for coming uh, several members of my my pastor and several members of my church were here tonight uh, and they did <coughs> have comments and I will share those comments uh, uh, with you all um, uh, in, in, the fu in the future here shortly. Uh, so I want to thank them for participating in the process and, uh, and um, uh, you know, making their voices uh, known to us. I also want to uh, thank the C members of the NAACP are out in the audience. Um, and we had a forum there the other night where we got to hear from them uh, and hear the things that they have to offer. So uh, I want you to know that any group that is uh, wanting to talk, I'm ready to listen and I want to hear what you have to say, regardless of, I want you to take that survey online, go to, go to the website. Take the survey online, but as well, I want to hear from you also. 
uh, because it's an open process. The last thing I'll, I'll, I'll mention is just so we talked about the budget tonight. It's that time of the, that's time of the year, that season to open things up, and I open things up the way uh, open things up every year, uh, which is every year that I've been on this board, I have voted for a pay increase, and this year will be no different. Uh, this year will be no different, and in fact, this year I'm looking for a four percent pay increase. Um, I'm looking for us to uh, take a bold move and move beyond uh, what we've done historically in the last three years I've been on the board. Uh, we've averaged right around that, uh, if, you, if you bring all the years together, we're right around that 2% average. I want us to, to move forward because we are in a, uh, in a race to uh, get the best uh, and most competitive teachers. We need to be competitive division. Uh, and when you see there, you look at our, our teacher scale there of you're going from zero years up to 10 years, and then you see that cliff, it, it drives off. What that means effectively to our, our core <coughs> staff is that Newport News becomes a training ground for all the other school divisions to get great teachers. Um, so they come in, get trained up, <coughs> get, paid, um, get, get paid a competitive salary starting off, but then uh, as they gain in the best years and, uh, and, and gaining the most experience to be a reward to our students, they move to other divisions uh, where they're getting rewarded in a more competitive uh, um, manner. So I want to see us uh, move past that. We started off this journey um, years ago. Uh, we were uh, we were we were lower and, and mediocre in terms of our teacher pay and, and where we compensate our, our staff. We've made significant progress while I've been on the board, and I want to see that progress continue. So I'll be pushing that and, and be continuing to, to push that hard. The other um, item of priority for me, when we talk about um, teacher pay, uh, <coughs> staff pay has an effect on the dropout rate. We've seen that every year that we have um, done these these raises, we've seen our dropout rate go down, and. Uh, the other component of that as well is activities for our kids. Uh, so you know, you all have known uh, over the over time. I've been very vocal about uh, middle school sports and increasing the slate of middle school sports and activities that we're offering to our kids. Uh, and so that is another priority that I want to see us tackle and address this year in the budget. Uh, if if money is the is the object, then I want to see that object addressed in the budget, and let's move forward with offering the activities for our kids. Because when we start looking at how do you make sure that kids are actively engaged and involved in getting the kind of social emotional learning that they need so that when they're moving through high school we can make sure that the uh, dropout rate continues to go down uh, the research that I'm looking at says middle school sports is the way to uh, to attack that problem so those are my two uh, priorities that I'm going to be looking uh, for us to address uh, during this this budget season and uh, with that <coughs> thank you mr. Brown uh, mrs. Simon um, I, I just want to thank everyone who came to our public hearing today. Um, I, I heard um, a lot about hiring someone who's a good listener, who's creative, and really at the end of the day I think it's about high expectations for all students. And that is going to be a very, very important characteristic that I think um, we need to be looking for in a superintendent to make sure that all of our students are career and college and citizen ready, that we're not leaving any kids behind in terms of expectations and that we have the same expectations for Georgette as we have for um, any other kid in this city. Uh, I think that's really important. And I'm just really proud of um, the program that we saw tonight with English as a Second Language students. The graduation rate in Virginia is 73%, and we are at 87%. We have at 93% um, graduation rate. We are above the state average and the national average in Newport News Public Schools. And I just want to make sure that everybody appreciates the hard work that goes in to making sure that our kids are graduating. And um, I'm just really proud of the direction we're moving in and um, proud of the work that we've accomplished and just looking forward to, to continuing to, to move in a really positive direction for our kids. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ely. Thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank everybody for coming out tonight. We had an amazing meeting. Um, thank the Huntington alumni as well as the citizens that came out and spoke their voice for what they want in our next superintendent. I guarantee you that we're going to do all we can to find the best superintendent for Newport News. We're going to do a national search. 
we're going to find the best candidate to serve not only the citizens, but our youth. And there are great things happening in Newport News Public School System. We're the most innovative school system there is out there. You could go to Demi High School, become a pilot. You could go to Woodside High School and major in the fine arts. One great thing we did last year is we had one of Beyonce own dancers come off Beyonce's tour and teach our kids routines. We had Rihanna's, the guy who wrote Rihanna Rehab album and Michael Jackson album come teach our kids music production. <clears throat> we have our children over at Work High School learning how to be crime scene techs. We have, starting next year, Entrepreneurship Academy at Minchfield. So you're talking about innovative. I wish we had these options available when I was in high school. New Producers is doing a great job. We're definitely on the cutting edge. And I also like to um, state that we had 2011 students graduate with industry, industry certifications last year. 2011. We're making our kids college, career, and citizen ready. When they leave Newport News Public School System, they will have some type of certification because we all know the job market is very hard now. Our kids are graduating, going to college, and they're having a hard time finding jobs. But they have that industry certification they can fall back on. So that's, that's definitely great. I'm excited about that. And as well, I will be doing a public, um, public search for our superintendent this Friday at Huntington Middle School. So if any citizens want to come that may not have access to the computer, we'll have the hand copies at Huntington as well as you can take it on the computer. You will be able to have the option to take it on the computer, but we would definitely have handouts for you to fill out. And there are definitely great things happening in Newport News. I appreciate everybody's support. Our vice mayor came out tonight, Sharon Scott. We appreciate your, um, your input and being with us and I'm definitely going to make sure in, 20, in 2017, 2018, we're going to have teacher raises. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stodger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I'll be brief and I just want to extend you know, great appreciation to our uh, two councilwomen, um, Councilwoman um, uh, Vic and Councilwoman Scott, um, having you here at our meeting. Uh, is a is a is a great warming kind of um, uh, effect, and um, uh, I think it, it shows it shows that we um, uh, we're going to make some progress. And um, I think also to have you seated here while we talked and had a public uh, hearing about uh, what the public wants in the next superintendent. Um, uh, the the way we're conducting the search, I think, is deliberately open. It's, it's, um, it's designed with a real commitment to hear the community. Um, so uh, thank you for being here, being a part of that. Okay, uh, Mr. Harris. All right, I will make it short as well. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Vic and Councilwoman Scott, which is my representative, uh, for coming out tonight. We really appreciate that. Um, also to the young ladies or the students at Woodside, this is a wonderful calendar. You all need to take a look at it and probably, I mean, who knows, they might could sell it. It's a beautiful calendar. Uh, I think I get a lot of the phone calls that are probably, I don't get all the exciting phone calls, but I get a lot of emails and a lot of uh, tough phone calls. Uh, uh, me and Douglas was at an event in WCP, uh, had a, a First Baptist East uh, down south, um, had a lot of, lot of, lot of, lot of statements that was made on what they was looking for, which is what you need. Uh, I was up north at uh, Pastor Maxwell's church uh, this weekend, and First Baptist Denby this weekend. So we are going out in the community and, and asking people to tell us, uh, you know, what they're looking for. And so I'm beginning to see a trend uh, of, of what people are saying. So. Uh, I also think, Mr. Chairman, we should move the next two meetings, either up north in the central at the um, at the Demi Community Center, and find a place in the south to hold the next uh, next two public meetings that we can, or next two public hearings. Um, received an email uh, from an organization, uh, SCLC, uh, so I told them I would, um, uh, you know, bring this before the uh, school board 
they would like to have a placard uh, placed at the STEM Academy inside of the uh, hallway uh, dedicating it to uh, three of the individuals that I'm sure some of you probably know or probably don't know uh, that has contributed a lot uh, to the city of Newport News and the state of Virginia. I myself is not a resident of the uh, state of Virginia. I'm from Mississippi, uh, but I, I do understand those contributions. And normally when people fight on the, on the side of civil rights, uh, it is not a uh, ethnic issue. It is a poor person issue normally. Uh, so whether it's from the west part of Virginia uh, to the north, <coughs> Uh, eastern, I mean, correction, northwestern part of the, of the state, or whether it's here on the peninsula. Uh, Reverend Marcellus L. Harris, Sr., and correction, Jr., uh, Reverend Dr. Curtis W. Harris, and Mr. Linwood D. Brew, uh, which was the executive director, uh, and Mr. Harris was the national civil rights uh, uh, leader who uh, did a lot of things here for the city. Uh, so just to make that as consideration, uh, you'll probably be hearing it again, so I just want the board members to, to uh, take that into consideration as we move forward. Um, I get a lot of phone calls about students, um, discipline issues, um, a lot of fights in schools. Um, the bottom line is, and I'm speaking to those individuals, uh, those, those students, and parents of those students uh, that we must stop uh, the fighting, uh, the gang issues. We are here to learn. We're here to learn in a safe environment. And if they uh, cannot abide by those, then they should be um, released from our school. We try to educate everybody. Uh, I have a lot of single mother parents that call me and you know tell me about their daughter or son being beat up in hallways. Uh, I, I find that appalling. Uh, I have um, three kids of my own that are grown now. Uh, so I just can't imagine that happening. Uh, so uh, not just that, I think we need to seriously, seriously take a look at when we do do our teachers hire that um, we try to find, and I think I talked to you about this, uh, uh, Mr. Superintendent, uh, trying to find those individuals, uh, uh, especially males, that want to teach. And I think we can do that. Uh, we, we discussed that. And I think you need more of that in schools. OK? Um, so that is pretty much it. We're doing wonderful things in the school system. Um, we want people to move, when they move here, to put their kids in the school system. I work on Fort Eustace, and so yes, I do hear some negative comments when uh, soldiers move uh, to this area or, or contractors or, or GS employees. Um, you know, I have to constantly defend in the school system. Uh, and so, and I, I told the superintendent, Dr. Kilgore, when I first got here that I don't think we had an educational problem. I think we had a publicity problem. And so that is something that you still have to work on daily, is to tell your story. Because if you do not, somebody would tell your story, I mean, they would tell your story for you. And normally it's not going to be uh, represented in a good light. And so just continue the uh, public outreaches uh, with your social media campaign. Um, and, and I think we can move forward in a positive direction. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Vice Chair, Mr. Ashby. Good evening. I will be, I will be short also. But again, just um, as I look out, um, won't, won't specifically, I don't want to labor, but I do thank the um, City Council for coming. I also see Ms. Lisa Searles Law here. Thank you very much for coming. And Valerie Fashion is here. She is the grandmother of one of my students. I just wanted to come to a school board meeting of one of my young achievers. So I'm just simply glad um, to see her. Um, I also want to look, um, say to Mr. Nichols, who's the acting superintendent, thank you for your shared leadership and um, the innovativeness that you've been displaying and demonstrating. Appreciate it so very much.
very much then to our presentations that have happened this evening. Uh, first, in reference to the budget, thank you, um, Ms. Rousseau. And um, we know we want to do some wonderful things for not just that we teach, but for the entire uh, Newport News family. And um, with the help and the support of the city council and the state and everybody um, to achieve the raises that we want, we just simply um, hope and believe that that is something that's going to happen. Um, we do want to compensate um, our employees because there's some, we know exactly what's happening. One of the things which I love saying and sharing are the facts are the facts. People may be entitled to the opinion, but you're never entitled to the facts. With the graduation rate where it is, 93.4%, with the dropout rate where it is, which is 2.3%, with the achievement gap that is closing, the implementation of a spark of the spark of the summer of the summer spark program, all those type of things that are happening, the early childhood programs that are happening, you know, going to uh, any early childhood situation, but I visited specifically Marshall Learning Center, and to see the things that four-year-olds are doing, it is attributed to um, people not believing that working with children is hard work. They see it as heart's work. And when you're committed, as Newport News, um, as my pastor says, educators are committed, then we're seeing the results that we are seeing. So I will, you'll always hear me brag and boast about Newport News Public Schools. Um, I get to do it twice a month at the town meetings that Dr. Cherry and I have. Um, we have invited people to come and share with us in reference to the superintendent search. Um, we would like to see the numbers increase, but we are taking it to the South District community, and we have been doing that not just simply when the superintendent search is happening, uh, but Dr. Cherry and I have been consistently and constantly doing that every second and third Thursday um, of the month. To our English as Second Language, that presentation tonight, I was glad that I brought that fact up about where our graduation rate is and how it's beating the state. And it's not a competition thing, but it just talks about the investment that the state is, is making. And then finally, I um, want to look over to my left and look at Ms. Shelley Simons. And when I look at Ms. Shelley Simons and encourage Ms. Shelley Simons, I see some things. I see some things and some characteristics. I see integrity. I see principles. I see standards, which were demonstrated by her in several situations as she competed or, or ran the race in reference to becoming a delegate as she was interviewed on CNN and MSNBC. But she always talked about the shared vision that she wanted for children, for education. She consistently and constantly shared that. And even in a post interview, she still looked up and said, well, you know, it didn't happen this time, but I'm looking futuristically. I'm looking holistically. And she did that. And she is about children. She wants to maybe attempt to do it on another level, but she's about children. And my respect and admiration for anybody who's about children and putting children first is at the top of the list. So blessings to you for what you have achieved and what you will achieve. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Um, I'm going to be very short. <laughs> we have a really close meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you heard, there are great things happening in Newport News Public Schools. And really want to reiterate some of the things that you heard today. Again, thank you to the two new National School Board Certified Teachers. Uh, that's wonderful to have two more of the highest uh, honor you can be as a, a teacher here. And then again, to our seven schools for the Virginia National League Schools. Uh, we're leading the way. Out of 70 schools, we had seven. Mm -hmm. so that's uh, another that's outstanding and then again for the presentations that were uh, that you heard today uh, especially with the equity and the ESL program I mean it's, it's unbelievable that we would have was it 55 55 different languages spoke mm -hmm. here in our school system and we were able to accomplish that and still continue to raise our graduation rate from uh, where it was just a short time ago to 93.4 percent. Um, especially thanks to uh, our Vice Mayor, Ms. Tina Vick, and our Councilwoman, and Ms. Uh, Sharon Scott, and I take you as the, from the school board chair, I assure you, I assure you, I, sh I assured the city manager, and I assured uh, the mayor, along with 
our acting superintendent that we will, this is our city, it's one city, right? We make, us seven here may have the final vote or say on our superintendent, but we need, there's a hundred and almost 80 people who live in this city that actually participates in this thing. So please go out, please go out and finish that survey. Mm -hmm. And you know what, I'm like you, I would like also to say it's not seven of us, it's 14 of us making these decisions. <clears throat> And that goes for whatever, because it's really our city, one city, one school board. It all comes from the same pot of money. <laughs> it all comes from the same pot of money. And so we must work together <clears throat> to ensure that the schools get what they want and the city gets what it needs. Okay? All I have to say, again, thanks for everyone who came out tonight. Please, please, please go out and fill out the survey. And I will take comments from um, several of my school board members that uh, they want to take this uh, search on tour uh, to the two ends of the city and uh, we're going to discuss this and hopefully we can make that happen. That said, are there any others? We can't, we can't finish it. Okay, yes. We Mr. Chairman, um, we do have a um, need for a closed session. Um, before I read this, I want to thank Ms. Kim Hinton, who's making the font bigger and bigger <laughs> as I get older and older. <laughs> so tonight it's so big, I don't even need these. <laughs> uh, but Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to put the motion on to convene a closed, set, closed meeting in accordance with the Code of Virginia, Section 2.2-3711, subsections A1, for the purpose of, of discussing an appeal of a termination decision. We have a second. You heard the motion. You heard the second. Time for the question. There being none, Ms. Hinton, please call the roll. Mr. Starchill. Four. Mr. Ashby. Four. Mr. Brown. Four. Mr. Ely. Four. Mr. Harris. Four. Mr. Hunter. Four. And Ms. Simons. Four. <clears throat> motion carries seven zero. Okay, we will adjourn to the close meeting. I hope y'all need to come back out. Is this an extra <laughs> calendar? Or is that yours?